All right, hello everybody. This is Zach Zacharias. We're back with more of Avedon the Black Fortress. So let's go ahead and continue here. Okay, that door is locked. I have a bronze helm, but it doesn't have any value, so I'm not going to worry about picking it up. Right, door is too complicated to be picked. This is a wide, natural cavern. It must have been discovered years after Abaddon was constructed. It was then converted into one of the feared workshops of the Black Fortress. There are about a dozen stone tables scattered about the room. Each has restraints, a glowing enchanted stone, a chair, and materials for taking notes. It is here that the prisoners of Abaddon are brought, so that the eyes can use powerful magic to pull the thoughts out of their minds. Uh, once here, a prisoner has no secrets. Everything they planned, everyone they conspired with, all that precious information goes straight to Red Redbeard. We have a bunch of rats in here. We should be able to do more damage now. And one thing that I found pretty cool about this game compared to Avernum is that uh, mages and sorcerers in this game, sorceresses in this game, can wield wands so they can safely just automatically range out of distance rather than always have to gas spells, which I think is a nice change. Obviously, a spell is going to be more powerful, and the spells are going to be more powerful in the long run, but it's still cool too have that as an option. All right, make sure my guy is tanking here. What are some other... All right, Savage Blow delivers a vicious flow, blow with your blade, doing more damage than normal. Challenge let out a challenging war, making all nearby enemies more likely to attack the blade master. This will also start to regen you will also start to regenerate briefly. Okay, so that's pretty handy. Second one heals damage the blade master has suffered. Okay, let me do challenge. Uh when you are next to a foe and then move away, your enemy will stop your movement. You will only be able to move one space for the rest of the turn. If you need to end your turn early, you can do this by pressing the space bar or clicking on your active character. Let's go ahead and do Dave. Ooh, Dave even has a bigger uh, range in this game compared to Avernum. Right, can we do more abilities or? Okay, it has a cooldown. So we ha uh, can't use any abilities yet. Okay, so far she has uh, Dave and Blade Shield, which are both good. Because I do want my Blade Master to tank it. Okay, so. The good news is they are ignoring her, and we don't need to use Second Wind yet, so we'll just. Just killed a bunch of rats here. But hey, the more XP, the better, right? There is a pale, shaken prisoner hiding in this room. This inmate has been held here for a while. All desire to fight or escape from the might of Abaddon is completely gone. Your attempts at conversation are met with terrified babbling. The prisoner doesn't match the description of anyone you were sent to find, so you leave. Ooh, that sounds very good. Hang on to that. Okay, potion of health. Oh, 
Potion of Vitality. Okay, so we have Potion of Recovery so far, Potion of Hell, Potion of Vitality, Blessing Crystal. There is a wretch hiding behind this cabinet, shriv shivering and whimpering. Based on his size, tattoos, and scars, you suspect that he has a high status among his people. And yet, Avanon has reduced this proud creature to a pool of jelly. When he sees you, he shouts, Aye, not hurt, no hurt, I give up. Roz is good, wretch, not hurt, fight, not fight. Take me to cell, please. What are you doing here? Hiding, bad spiders, they wrap me up, me alive and stuck in webs and waiting to be ate. Bad, bad, please save me. Why did you escape your cell? Escape? Not escape. Run. I run or be eaten. Too many rats. They swarm me if I stay with biting. I had to go. I will send to look for you. Yes. Yes. Take me to safety. I do I not do the bad things they say. No, I don't. They say they let me go. Go back to tribe. Want tribe. Please no hurt. You are going home? Jailers say, yes, go home, be great. Browns go to Avedon and live. Be great thing, if only I live. What did they think you did? Weapons. Think I get weapons to give the wretches to fight Avedon. I hear rumors about that. I tell them that all. Just rumors. Wretches flapping big dumb lips. I know nothing real. They believe me. I need to do something with you. Browns looks hopeful and then terrified. Just take me to cell, or leave me alone. No hurt, Roz, please. Stay here. Someone will be here for you soon. Yes, Graz stay. Graz hide. You kill pests. Thank you. Thank you. Graz be safe now. He returns to his hiding spot. The first part of your mission is complete. Now hunt for the other missing prisoners. Ah, uh, yeah, he clearly doesn't seem like a threat, and they already were on the verge of letting him go anyway, so... Okay, are these also just terrified prisoners? Okay, yeah. So, we do want to make sure we're consistent at least. You hear a loud clattering as you return to the scrying room. A portcullis to the southeast slowly opens. Odd. It's, a, it's as if someone was inviting you in. We're still going to explore out here for a moment before we head down there in there. Little snarling rat does a little bit has a little bit more health than the bridge. Chainmail. That's good. Well, let's put that on him. So now he has some armor to use. Nathalie stops walking. You turn to see what is wrong, only to see that she looks thrilled. There is not a touch of doubt or fear in her expression. Uh, why have you stopped? Is something wrong? No, nothing is wrong. Nothing at all. I am finally acting. No more lessons. No more the tedium of being a, a student. I am doing what I was born to do. Enough of that. You need to focus. She seems slightly embarrassed. Of course, I apologize and will improve. Let us pr proceed. 
he walks forward into the shadows okay and what's also really cool about this game that jeff did for avadon is that your npcs your companions that go with you on missions and stuff they'll actually have their own dialogue in certain instances so i think that was actually really cool for jeff of spiderweb software to do what's this this book is about Handbar's Council. This entry has been added to your codex, which can be read in your journal. Codex. Ooh, we have a few. Uh, Linnaeus. Linnaeus is a name given to all of the known lands, surrounded by endless sea. The history of Linnaeus is the history of all living things. Nothing lies past the shore but ocean. Well, actually, there are legends of lands beyond the sea. Centuries ago, supposedly, some brave mariners departed and returned bearing proof of other lands far beyond. But that was long ago, and any such evidence is lost, if it ever existed, which it almost assuredly didn't. There are other tales of ma mad mariners who tried to discover lands across the sea. They have never returned. The dominant power in Linnaeus is the Midlands Pact, more commonly known as the Pact. These five nations are located in the center of the continent. They stand united against the Far Lands, the many small squabbling powers that occupy the other peninsulas of Linnaeus. The Pact. The Pact is an alliance of five nations occupying the central lands of Linnaeus. Though these countries have wildly different cultures, governments, and histories, one thing brought them together. Mutual resolve to end centuries of raiding and devastation wrecked by the Far Lands, small powers that surround the Pact. The lands of the Pact are rich and pleasant. They are also flat and difficult to defend. Barbarians, wretches, and titans from the small states at the edge of Linnaeus wrecked devastation from count for countless years. Then came the rise of Overlord Handbar of Hoklanda, the warrior and diplomat who united the five pack states in their uneasy peace. There are three distinct periods in the history of the pact. The first age, the Black Age, when the pact was torn apart in civil war, and then and the third age, when the pact was reformed under supervision and enforcement of the Fortress of Abaddon. Handbar's Council. The five states of the Midlands Pact are fiercely independent. They have their own cultures, beliefs, and goals. And, to be frank, they don't generally like each other. The alliance is highly productive, but it does not come from love. The Pact states mostly see to their own affairs. They have their own laws, taxes, and so on. The business of the Pact itself is run by Hanvar's council. This body has 16 members. Each nation of the Pact chooses and sends three, and these 15 in turn select a leader called the Imper Imp Imperator. The council, and in particular the Imperator, speak for the Pact as a whole. Hanvar's council decides what the five states will contribute to the pact in wealth and warriors. It commands the Legion and the Mariners, the army and navy of the pact as a whole. It resolves many, many, many disputes between the five member states. It decides how to deal with the Far Lands and when one of them should be crushed again. And Hanvar's council selects the Master of Avedon. Though once the Master is chosen, the council is subject to Avedon's rulings. Of course, a wise Master will not anger the council over much. Hanvar's council has met continuously during the entire existence of the pact. Of course, during the Civil War of the Black Age, the council was powerless. Its words were ignored. Now the council is strong, and those who mock it or ignore its words risk attracting the attention of Abaddon. Okay, interesting. So, I'm down to read that so you all get a little bit more backstory into the game. So... There is a prisoner being held in this room. He is a young man dressed in torn clothes of an unfamiliar style. He stands in the middle of a magic circle surrounded by a translucent field of energy. He is staring off into space and yet he seems to sense that you are there. Inside the field he moves, moves and talks very slowly. He says in his odd painfully drawn out way, I, I am Lex Rim. I am here to teach. Uh, you said you were here to teach? I am an example. I had a choice. I could choose death or uh, to teach. I teach. So I was frozen here. Frozen? Is that the field around you? Yes. It keeps me alive. And you... You move very, very fast. It's hard to focus on you to understand. Is it painful to be in there? No, I am 
numb. Time goes by. I am... He sort of drifts off. Uh, what are you here to teach me? Never fight Redbeard. Do not try to assassinate him. You will be dead or like me. Redbeard keeps you here as an example. He brings new servants to see me so they know not to revolt. You try to kill Redbeard? I came from Durham. I thought Abaddon had too much power. I had a poison. I thought Redbeard would not detect it. I was wrong. Why did you choose to live? Hope. Someday I might be free. I thought this is better than the Void. I w was wrong. Okay, I don't really know enough about his ca case besides what he's told me. Uh, he tr um, that he just assassinated Keeper, so... And again, we haven't really met the Keeper at this point anyway, so... I was just like, Alright, consider me taught, I am going. With painful glacial slowness, Lexram nods inside his magical shell. Yes, keep your thoughts close, and they will not hurt you. You have heard what I say. I return to silence. He closes his eyes. You hear an ominous clanging sound echoing through the stone halls. This room is far older than the other parts of the dungeon. It looks like it dates back to the earliest days of Abaddon. It seems to be some sort of ceremonial chamber. Perhaps rituals of great import, like the swearing in of new keepers, happen here. Alas, before it can be used for anything dignified, it will require a, quite a cleaning. The escape wretches to the south have been acting in, in an aggressively disgusting way here. Indeed, it looks like they have. Reversal seats and ability. Charge. Activate the shadow charm. Uh, Jeff's uh, sound effects never change with that uh, goblin screaming. So yeah, my Blade Master can tank quite a bit, but maybe it's just because it's really still the intro, and we haven't gotten into the real meat of the story yet. So, I mean, I could have made a longer video on the last part, but you know, not too. We'll put on these iron gauntlets, so. That is leather armor. The chainmail is obviously better, but we'll hang on to that anyway. I know we're going to have more people to equip eventually. Okay, so the lamps don't really matter much, but... Might just go without them. All they do is light up the uh, dungeon a little bit. But I can still see in the dungeon, similar to Avernum, really. Uh, there are three escaped pri prisoners standing by the southern passage. They have scavenged leather armor and blades, and they look understandably desperate. One of them steps forward. He salutes you with a stolen blade. I am Hanzi, and we are warriors of Camaria. We will not lose this chance to fight your kind. He looks you over, though we thought more would come to us. Uh, we don't need more help to play a Farlander like you. Ponzi nods. That is the spirit of Abaddon. It is courage that crushes our people, but we do admire it. The two warriors by his side start to look nervous. Ponzi says, Be strong. A death fighting the pact is a death with honor. You are from Camaria? Yes, we are the warriors of the Northern Plains, the terror of the Wild Realm, and the Pact. You of the Pact call us barbarians, savages, and perhaps that is true. We will take any chance to slay one of your kind before we are brought down. 
why are you in prison here? I can't speak for my brothers. He nods at the increasingly terrified warriors to either side. I was caught raiding the villages of the Wild Realm. Your kind calls it attacking the pact, but it is, it is what we Chimerians are born to do. I don't see any way of convincing them, so I feel like we have no choice here. Uh, you are an enemy of the pact. You will pay for your crimes. Natalie nods approvingly. She mutters, This is what I have waiting for. Fight. At last. Let us destroy them. Hansi looks quickly at the warriors standing the other side. I've only just met you, but in these last moments, I will call you my clan brothers. Be strong like a true Camarian, and happily, your charge interrupts the speech. And we ain't, we ain't got time for no speech. Okay, that was an area effect spell, so that's why it still hit her anyway. But as long as we still keep them away, it should be fine. Let's go ahead and do a daze. All right, Hansi was able to resist it. That's all right. Oh, screw your battle frenzy. See, you're dead already. Hansi collapses the floor, mortally wounded. The fields of Camaria. I see them. I slew a hand. Yes. Victory. Victory. Then he closes his eyes. Whatever fantasy this foe of Abaddon entertained in the last moments of his life, it is over now. I mean, he didn't even phase me, so I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know. I've been debating if I want to use a spear in this game since we can't dual wield. Or ooh, Iron Broadsword, but I need a higher strength for it first. Uh, or if I should just stick with uh, a sword and shield combo for more defense. I don't know. Uh, but this might actually be better for a later character I'll get. So I'm not going to put that on right away. There was a pen to the south. Livestock was recently held there, perhaps to serve as food for something much fiercer and larger. Now there are rats from the pen, gnawing bones, and drinking from the watering trough. They haven't noticed you. Sometimes a creature will be inattentive. You can sneak past it. If you get too close, a question mark will appear over his head. If you stay close to it for too much longer, it will notice you. Let's just go ahead and fight them. I don't need that. I, I want that XP. Of course, as soon as I don't have the challenge on, they go right to my mage. So yeah, you're going to have to utilize your Blade Master often to protect your mage. Because in the Vernum, they also targeted the spellcasters a lot as well. I remember that. Okay, lockpick. That those are will come in handy. So, I really don't feel like I need the lamp, honestly. Uh, because I can see in dungeons just fine. You know what? Let's just hang on to him for a little bit longer, and then I'll make my decision. Let's go ahead and pick up this one. Cause yeah, if you remember me playing the original Burnham, I never picked up light sources to see the way I was able to get through those dungeons just to find without them. Alright, you don't have a key. When you enter this cavern, you stop for a moment amazed. It is a huge natural dome dominated by a nat strong natural spring. The builders of the Black Fortress must have known this chamber was here. If Abaddon is ever under siege, it will not lack for water. This chamber is part of the dungeon. There is a wide shaft in the ceiling over the center of the room. Large, dried up scales litter the floor, and the walkways are covered with deep claw marks. This is a guest room for particularly large and notable visitors to Avedon. Dragons, for example. No such beasts are in residence at the moment. However, on the stone dome rising in the middle of the spring, you can see a lone human. He watches your approach. The silent is where creatures like dragons rest when they visit Abaddon. 
They enter through the shaft in the ceiling directly above you. The only person on the island now is a middle-aged woman. She wears long, torn robes. She is not yet pale and twitchy. She must have been a prisoner here for only a short time. She looks at you wirily. So, this is who they send to bring down Quiria. This is all? Tarkas said there would be more before he left, but that is my punishment for trusting him. You, sh you saw Shadow Tarkas? Where is he? On, fool. You think that, given such a chance, he would be able to hold, you would be able to hold him? He said he would return to help me, but I knew that he would take no risk on my behalf. Why were you brought here? Why did your spies in the Taiwan Empire bring me here? They thought I and, I and others were conspiring against the pact. Is it true? You will never know. Soon, I will be dead. I'm here to find you. Return to your cell, or you will die. Naphtali quietly says, Please don't let her make a speech. I've heard enough Farlander garbage today. Quiria maintains a calm composure. No, a chance to die before my soul is invaded is a gift. I will accept my death like a daughter of the Tawan Empire. You sound like a Camarian I just met. Her composure breaks for a moment. She is offended. I am from the Tawan Empire, the core of civilization that once ruled most of Linnaeus, and you compare me to those barbarians? All we have in common is hatred for you, nothing else. You Farlanders throw your lives away so e easily. Our lives are as valuable as yours. I die proud with the satisfaction of knowing what will happen to your kind after I am gone. It is time. Defend yourself. She holds her hands out to either side. A nimbus of light appears around them. I am prepared. I only wish to kill one of your kind before I die. The mist at the, edge of the edges of the island starts to coalesce into translucent forms. He holds her hand out and a bolt of fire flies towards you. Okay, let's go ahead and do the challenge. What potions do I have, by the way? Of course, she would summon like a bunch of rats and stuff like that to deal with me. Might have been a waste, but oh, actually, no, that, that did a lot of damage to her, in fact. Uh, let's do that. Of course, she's backing away. She is summoning all these rats and spiders. Are you kidding me? Uh, yeah, that restores vitality. That restores abilities. I don't need any of those. Let's just head right to her. Savage blow. Oh, come on, really? Uh, there's not really how to be stuck on these spiders. Yeah, I don't need to heal yet, but we can do this. collapses to the ground. She is not long for this world. He starts to whisper. You have to lean close to hear what she says. Arcus, bless. Avenge me. Are we really going to question her? I mean, she's not going to tell us while she's dying. So we might as well just finish her off. And I'm pretty sure we're going to find out who they are anyway uh, later on. Die, enemy of the pack. She hears your words and smiles. The honor of the Tawan. She whispers. Then she closes her eyes for the last time. You notice that she has a key hanging from her belt, stolen during her, her escape from her cell. You take it. 
through the mist to the southwest, you can just make out a closed door in the wall of this huge chamber. Oh, and Nathalie leveled up. Uh, Nathalie turns to you. She is literally shaken with, with excitement. Last, after all this waiting, I was chosen. I went out. I slew the enemies of the pact. All my doubts were wrong. They should have sent me out long ago. I am grateful that you chose me. My wasted years are behind me. I am a warrior of Abaddon. Let's find our way back to Imamora. Of course, we should report our victory as soon as we can. The hand's enthusiasm does not fade. Right, Iron Breastplate can't equip this item. Um, shamans can't use, sorcerers can't use. So I do appreciate that uh, Jeff included what stuff you can't equip on them, which I think is fine. I can't search this pot here. Must be nothing in it. Let's explore a little bit more before you hit report. Back to Imamora. Get some more coins. There's never any rush with these games, so it, there's nothing wrong with exploring all you, that you can. Ooh, that has a lot of value. And I'm only hanging on to this armor and stuff right now to when I can equip, equip and stuff like that. Down here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's go back up. I want to see. Oh, dang it. Okay, whatever. We'll fight them. More wretches. Okay, I know that's a lot of enemies, but you know what we also have? We have this. Yeah, this Dave has such a long range compared to. Compared to Avernum. Although I think Avernum still had a had a pretty generous range as well. Character has gained a level. Press the info button to learn how to train your character. Leather jerkin. More armor. I mean, she is better off wearing robes right now. Anyway, so I think I'll just... I will just hang on to this in case I need to equip it on somebody. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and train. Uh, you gain levels by completing quests and defeating foes. When you gain level, you can increase your base statistics and your abilities. Press the plus button to increase your base statistics. Uh, why can't I talk right now? Uh, strength, dexterity, etc. Uh, then select the abilities to the right you wish to increase. Okay, so similar to a burnum, your attributes will level up in a certain order like for the first time will be strength then next up will be dexterity then it'll be intelligence and it'll be endurance now in a burn if you remember i sort of did it in like a triangle format where if strength leveled up i'll level up endurance and if and endurance leveled up then i'll level up dexterity dexterity will level up strength and intelligence at least some of my warriors would level up strength and then i did the same thing for sorceresses. Whenever strength leveled up, I would level up intelligence, and it, it was just kind of a, you would have to watch the uh, let's plays of Avernum to see how I leveled up. But I think for this one, I think I'll just simply level up, level up again. The only one I won't train on, at least my warrior Xander, my blade master Xander here, is intelligence. But right now I'm going to focus on strength, and then if, when dexterity levels up, I'll level up dexterity, then endurance, level up uh, endurance. When intelligence levels up, I'll just level up strength again. 
since he doesn't need intelligence. All right, for the tree here, we have Path of the Shield, Savage Blow, Second Wind, Melee Training. So it is kind of like if you level up one thing, you have to go for the other. Okay, so let me do this right now. All right, that took two uh, skill points. Since I, All right, you spend two skill points to train the skill for the first time. You have trained this character. Press the OK button to save the changes. So I think the path I'm going to go... I mean, this one is pretty good, but I think I like this one where you have, like, these special abilities. I think I like those a little bit more. And if you get them up to certain levels, like level 7, level 6, then they can do even more for you. I think I'll do that for now. Let's just boost up our intelligence, and then we'll go Ward Mastery for now. Uh, oh, Power Specialization. Each level of Power Specialization increases three skills in the center column by one. Uh, these skills tend to make your other attacks more effective and protect you from enemy attacks. You gain a Specialization at levels 5, 15, and 25. Ooh, interesting. That's a new addition. Or not a new addition, but that's something pretty unique to this game. Alright, now that I leveled up his strength too, he should be able to wear the armor, right? Or the iron breastplate? Yeah. Put that on him. We'll put the iron broadsword on him. Okay, what I was gonna do first is explore this upper section to see if I missed anything before I go on. Okay, this is the entrance back, basically. But I still want to explore down there real quick before I head back to Imora. Uh, food doesn't really matter in this game. I mean, it's really just there for the... Those chain greaves would be so good if uh, you could wear them right now. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to grab lamps if when I can, and then I'll decide if I need lamps or not in dungeons. I mean, I could just go through that uh, door up there to get back to Imamora, but again, I'm going to explore stuff I can here really quick. Doesn't seem to be nothing, though. Yeah, that door we can't access. Seem to be nobody in here. And Razor Disc, Shadow Walker required. Ooh, let's pick that up. We clearly are going to need that here soon. Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention that she has her own inventory, I think. We could probably give some items to her when she gets a chance. Or just whoever is accompanying us on missions, because you do have choices. As far as the companions go. Uh, I have information on your four prisoners. You tell I'm Memora what happened with the prisoners. He takes notes on your findings. Yes, well, none of these results are surprising. The death of Quiria is most unfortunate. I believe that we could have learned much from her. Another unfortunate result of the accident upstairs. And as for Shadow Tarkas, he, he shakes his head. I will inform Hand Callan. As for you, please convey my gratitude to Hart Miranda and let her know that my need for aid has not ended. I wish you a productive time here at Avedon. Okay, sounds good. So yeah, when we get more companions, we can split potions and stuff like that between them. More on missions and stuff like that. Okay, let me do, do the same for him. See, as a warrior, we have to train. I don't know if I'm going to take him often, though. You return to the main floor of Abaddon, eager to report to Hart Miranda of your successful completion of your first mission. Your potential companions have returned to their quarters, waiting to be called back to duty. When in Abaddon, you can visit your companions and speak with them. 
You can also access their inventories and change what items they have equipped. When you leave Abaddon once again, you can choose who can who will come with you. I would mess with their inventories now, but I do want to save it until I get more companions, which won't be too much longer. The dungeons have been secured. You tell Hart Miranda what happened in the dungeon. She is furious, so happily not at you. The holding pen's empty? Tark is gone? Someone has had a successful day's work. Still, you have done well and under difficult circumstances. I think you have earned a long rest. Sell Lynn, find your feet, get supplied. She gives you an ambulance on a copper chain. A yellow stone dangles from the end. This will give you passage into the other area, into the areas of Abaddon you are allowed to explore. Your quarters are southeast of here, near my office. One more brief task awaits you, and then you can go sell Lynn. What do I need to do? Redbeard always meets all of his new servants. Even on this difficult day, I do not think he would wish his orders ignored. Ascend into the central tower and speak with them. He points to the east. The stairs are in the central chamber. Uh, would you like some advice? I would appreciate it. Redbeard has been bringing about the deaths of foes of the pack since long before you were born. Your life is meaningless to him. Only the pack matters. I would remember that before engaging in any useful impu imp impudence or mischief. That is all. If you need me later, I will be in my office near your quarters. He returns the shouting orders. Meet Redbeard. At last, you can meet Keeper Redbeard, Master of Abaddon. The stairs to his tower are in the center of the main floor. Go upstairs and introduce yourself. Okay, we can explore all of Abaddon later, but let's go ahead and meet Redbeard. This round hall is in the center of the floor of Abaddon. A spiral staircase dominates the room, rising 30 feet straight up and through a hole in the ceiling. Huge, emotionless, unblinking guards watch the chamber, ready to instantly impale anyone who seems the slightest bit untrustworthy. You concentrate on looking trustworthy. These stairs lead up to the chambers of Redbeard, Keeper of Abaddon, the merciless guardian of the pact, whom you now need to face. You shudder. This is the first floor of Redbeard's Tower, where the Keeper of Abaddon meets with the hands, eyes, and hearts, as well as the assorted diplomats, supplicants, and courtiers who come through the come to ask for help or mercy. It is far quieter up here than downstairs. Nobody wants to be the loudmouth who irritates Redbeard. That can be very dangerous. You can see his hall to the east. Several people wait patiently outside his chambers, hoping that he will decide to spend a few minutes hearing petitions. He usually doesn't, especially in these chaotic times, but they wait anyway. For day after day. You step into Redbeard's audience chamber, the place where the Keeper of Avedon greets outsiders, and for the first time you lay eyes on the master of the Black Fortress, the man who has kept Linnaeus trembling in fear since decades before you were born. He sets down a goblet, casually wipes his mouth with a sleeve, grins, and waves you forward. A new hand, and a good time for it too. Step in here, let me have a look at you. At last, you stand before Redbeard, who is alone in his enormous stone hall. He is not what you expected. He is a massive man, over six feet tall and broad of shoulder. The hair and beard that are his namesake are, as expected, bushy and fiery red. He looks like he is only a few years older than you. Which, considering he has been the Keeper of Abaddon for almost 60 years, is a little odd. But the strangest thing is his mood. Despite the chaos inside and outside his fort, he seems strangely jolly. A genuine grin doesn't seem to leave his face for a moment. He steps forward cl to clap you on the shoulder. Welcome, new hand. Welcome to Abaddon. Uh, I thank you for your welcome. He nods. Politeness. Good. Manners are a valuable thing to have out in the wilds. A good blade, of course. A knowledge of the rightness of our cause. A calm and a kind word can do so much, eh? Even in these chaotic times, I always greet my new recruits. I never send anyone to risk their lives without, without at least that little honor. And of course, there is one small bit of business. What is that? 
He stands up straight and adopts an air of bemused self-righteousness. I, Redbeard, Keeper of Avedon and Defender of the Pact, offer you the honor of being a hand of the Black Fortress. Do you swear to obey your, our orders and give all for the safety and security of the Pact? I do so swear. Uh, I will give all I can to protect the Pact. Redbeard nods. But you won't swear, eh? Noted. I have never had much faith in oaths, te seen too many of them broken. But I do love tradition. Ceremony, yes? He laughed. Now, I have a question for you. Uh, what is it? All come here to serve the pact, though they have very different ways to do it. Some that involve serving me, and some that oppose me. But service is never the only reason. Not with so much wealth and power available, eh? So tell me, and I assure you I have heard everything. What do you want here? I haven't really thought about it. Really? All the work to come here, and you have no idea what you wish from your life? Fascinating, and not the slightest bit suspicious. Still, focus on duty is appreciated. I suppose... Then that is all. I must return to my work. Uh, where should I go then? Back to Miranda, and quickly. She will have much for you to do, and I must do my best to hold back the limitless chaos out there. He makes a grand wave with his hand. Then one of the hearts comes in, her arms full of mass and scrolls, and he returns to work. Go back downstairs and find Heart Miranda's office. Speak with her, and she will hopefully give you some time to settle in. Okay, so we've met Redbeard now. Let's see what else we have to do. Okay, Miranda's down here now. As we see on the map. You track down Hart Miranda in her office. Even though the smell of blood and smoke is still in the air, she sits at her desk as if nothing unusual has happened. She looks up at you and brushes her graying hair out of her eyes. So, you have been to see Redbeard, and how did it go? I managed to survive. She nods. That is a proper attitude. Respect, care, and the lack of complacency. Redbeard is the most dangerous man in Linnaeus. Now, I know that I told you that you would be allowed some time to sell in. I'm afraid that we'll have to wait. Uh, what do you mean? The problems we have had mean that our, we are desperately short on hands. There is a task that has been waiting to be completed for some time. We do not like to seem tardy or inattentive, so I am going to send you. Of course, you will be supplied first. What has been happening here? He sniffs the air. Ah, that smoke will clear soon. I can see why it is still on your mind. We had an incident within the fortress, a rare event that will not be repeated. There has been, at the same time, some tur turmoil on parts of Linnaeus. What happened inside the fortress? We are still investigating. We suspect that a spell went out of control in the holding cells. The pulse of energy disrupted the other spells that held prisoners and imprisoned specimens in place. It is all under control. Problems elsewhere? There have been a variety of incidents in the Far Lands. Riots in the Tawan Empire. Raiders from Svorgald. More freaks coming out of the corruption. These things happen, however, it has required us to send out most of our hands. They will soon return. It's all happen at once? Yes, that is part of life in Abaddon. Months of inactivity, followed by several methods of landing in our laps at once. Don't be concerned. Miranda looks up at you from her desk. What else do you need to know? There is much to do and little time to do it. I'd like to know more about Redbeard. Ah, yes. So many rumors, so little knowledge. All new eyes and hands must be told what is true and what is not. Do you have any questions? Does he have three wives? She laughs bitterly. Yes, and I am one of them. Callan and Lyra are the others. We are not actually married, of course. It is simply our nickname. We have served him for so long, so loyally, that this is the name we have been given. Not kindly, I think. No matter. Can he read my mind? No, I don't think so. But he understands the weakness of humanity so well that he might as well be able to. Are there many attempts on his life? For a moment, you see a flicker of something in her eyes, but it passes instantly. Yes, that is true. 
Whoever destroys Redbeard takes his place, with the unlimited wealth and power that accompany it. But they always fail. You saw in the dungeons what happens then. What do I need to do? First, you need supplies. As a servant of Avedon, you have fantastic resources at your disposal. Before I send you into the field, you can tap into them. Go speak with Smith Dumont and get your first scarab. Find Craftmaster Nicodemus and see what he has made for you. Then return to me. Their locations are marked down on your map of stars. Hold down the tap key to see a map of the entire area. For your upcoming mission, you will get some supplies and equipment. This includes a scarab, whatever that is. Speak with Smith Dumont and Craftmaster Nicodemus. You can find them in the southeastern quadrant of Avedon. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save right here, but that's going to do it for this part of Let's Play, but I will see you all soon with the next. I'm very excited to get more into Avedon with you all. We haven't even been on our first mission yet, and we're already getting plenty of nice backstory, though. Anyway, I'll see you all until the next part.